Hello everyone, for today's recipe, a blast from the past with the mushroom royal and not only mushrooms but as you can see other vegetables. In a nutshell you may wonder what on earth is a royal, it is a long forgotten type of uh, side that you can serve cold which is perfect for spring or summer and it is based of pureed vegetables of your choice and you can even use fish mixed with a savory custard and that you're gonna poach in little ramekins like this and you can serve it on a plate. So if you're someone at home looking for a nice and elegant kind of side or perhaps you have a restaurant or a cafe you're looking for something new to put on your menu where uh, the royale are really the way forward so i'm going to show you exactly how they are made and you know the good news is they are extremely simple so here we are so as always all the ingredients uh, i'll be using in this recipe will be listed in the video description and as i said the royale can be made with virtually any vegetables that you want in this particular video i am gonna basically make a royale of cauliflower one of broccolini a mushroom one and potentially also a tomato uh, a tomato royale all right so i'm not gonna spend any time showing you how to just make the puree or how to make the duck cell because this is something we've seen before i'll put the link on the video description i've got a video on the duck cell and how to make that and for the puree vegetables it is just a matter of boiling these in salty waters when it's finished to boil you pass them into a food processor a bit of butter and you're gonna let it cool down because we need to have the puree Cold. And so all what I'm going to do on the side is make a puree of cauliflower, a puree of broccolini, a duck set of mushroom, and this is a reduction of a chunky tomato sauce and that I've really dried up so it's nice and thick and it's already cold. You can keep some elements of decoration. We're going to see that after. You don't have to. And the most important and what we're going to be concentrating on is how to assemble the royale and cook them. Now royale, I typically cooked in dariol molds. This is a dariol mold. They are basically ramekins. And so as you can see here, this is made of metal and we're just going to fill it up and that is going to go in a bain and we're going to poach uh, this wire. Now these are the stainless steel version. You can find more modern ramekin, a bit higher, a bit larger. These are non-stick and you can find this online in any shops and you can virtually use any uh, shape you want. As you can see, I've got one here. I may use a fancy one. Uh, so gather all the ingredients, make the puree, have anything that you want to make ready. And after that, I'm going to show you basically how it goes. What is the mixture we're going to be using and what are the ratios to make a whale? So here we are. I've prepared all uh, my purees. As you can see, I've got my duck set of mushroom here. I've got a puree of broccolini here. I've got a reduced uh, tomato puree. Let's call it like this. And this is a puree of cauliflower. Now to make these little sides, and it's an assembly game. So we have that little workshop like we had the last time with the eggs in a pot. So you're gonna have to have all your purees ready. You're gonna have all your dial molds ready with the dish we're gonna use for the memory, but we're gonna, I'm gonna show you this into details. Use a scale. Uh, it is recommended to make sure it's all precise. You're gonna need a brush, a little bit of butter, and of course a bowl because we're gonna have two different types of mixture and the mixture which is the custard and we're going to use another bowl where you're going to mix the custard plus the puree to then pour it into the dial so very important make sure you've got everything ready and then we're going to start by preparing the dial mold now if you like art and craft you're going to love that recipe <laughs> because for each dial mold you're going to have to cut a little circle of parchment paper to fit at the bottom okay so for each and every one huh? so i've got eight here but the way we're going to prepare this is quite straightforward so you first remove the paper you uh, you're going to take your brush and we're going to take some soft softened butter uh, with a, a pastry brush and all what we're going to do here we're going to basically be coating all of the inside of the mold Once you're done, I've got the butter, you're going to take your piece of parchment paper and you're going to basically put it at the bottom 
and make sure it is totally uh, glued to the bottom like this uh, so it almost become transparent okay and that's gonna really ease the uh, undishing of the uh, of the of the cream at the end all right so you're gonna repeat the same for every single of the Dario mold. Now I'm all done. All the Dario molds are coated with butter with the piece of parchment paper and this is a roasting pan I'm using because we're gonna make a bain-marie which is a bath of hot water to poach this cream and you always put a little piece of parchment paper at the bottom to avoid any kind of bubbles you know if it doesn't boil even when it comes to a simmer you could have these bubbles of water splashing out and have water come into your dish. So to prevent that usually you put a piece of parchment paper and then we're going to pour the water over but before we do that of course let's talk about the mixture all right for the custards it's very straightforward and you've got two choices for 200 milliliters of cream I'll put the equivalent uh, in ounce on the screen you can either use two full eggs like this or one full eggs and two egg yolk which is more the Escoffier style but it will be more yellow you break the eggs and that you just mix with the cream and then we're going to add some seasoning. So you can see the color. Uh, if you have more egg yolks, you're going to have more that kind of yellow tint. For the seasoning, very simple as well. A good pinch of salt. You can use white or black pepper. I'm using coarse black pepper. And then a grating of nutmeg. For the nutmeg, I always uh, use, you know, like a fresh nutmeg. And not too much, but a good grating. Once the seasoning is in, same thing. Good mix. And we are ready to mix this with our puree vegetable. Now for the puree, the mix, it is either sometimes half-half. So you're going to put, for instance, one portion of puree for one portion of custard. Sometimes it can be less than that, depending on how wet you mix it. So for instance, take a scale if you're not sure. If I add, for instance, uh, let's say 50 grams, roughly 50 grams of this, I'm going to take my custard and add the same amount. Okay, so I've got a bit more 57 uh, grams, but basically I'm going to go to 100, a bit more. And just have a look, take my whisk, and again, mix the whole lot and see if it's good enough. You see what I've got here? So it's nice and liquid. You don't want to have it too liquid, that is fine, and that would do. So you see one portion of puree, one portion of custard is fine. So that's going to be my tomato flan. Okay, and once you've got your mix, of course, huh, very simple, you take your diol mold and you're going to put some of your mixture in here. Up, and we're done. Don't put it all, all the way up, I'll leave a little margin. My royal of vegetables are ready. As you can see, all the nice colors. I've got a tomato, broccolini, cauliflower, and mushrooms. And all what needs to have a nice to cook it. So you're going to preheat your oven at 150 degrees Celsius. I put the equivalent Fahrenheit on the screen. I'm going to bring some water to the boil uh, uh, to pour into my dish here. But I'm not going to do it here, because if you do it here and you carry with the water, chances are you're going to put water across. and It's going to fall into your, your royal. You don't want that. So I'm going to bring this at the entrance of my oven. And by the oven, I'm going to pour the water in. So I'll just show you how it looks like. All right, so what do I mean? Okay, I've got my tray here at the entrance of my oven. I make some space and I'm going to pour my hot water three quarters of the way up. And this is boiling water, okay? Okay, my water is in. I push that in and I'm going to cook this for about 25 to 30 minutes at 150 degrees Celsius. Okay, so... My oil are cooked and I've tried different versions. This is the Escoffier one that has got actually quite a lot of egg yolks. You use one full egg for three egg yolks, uh, but it's kind of stiff already. So to try to unmold this, uh, apparently you have to take usually the knives like this around it and then try to turn it over and hope for the best. Ah, okay. So don't forget <laughs> that we have a paper in there that's protecting. All right, so don't mind the presentation. It was a bit dry on the side. So what I've done, I've put some uh, Duke cell with a bit of cream and I'm just trying to go around like that to see what kind of presentation we could, uh, we could do. That's just an idea I had before we cut it open. But really, you know, what we need to see is really how it's inside. So, you know what, let's just try to, ooh. Ooh, it is very, very soft. It looks like a little pâté. All right, so closer look here. So it's not about presenting anything here. It's just to kind of analyze this because it's not a common thing. So as you can see, look at that. It is very soft. 
very bouncy but yet it is still look, it is still very very creamy in the same time it's very interesting mmm wow or oh, the mushroom one here Ooh, that is something else it could be a little bit colder but look at this it's like a it's a mousse it's a mousse of mushroom mm. that's what it is mm. and I can really see this as a cold starter with a nice sauce on the side. I didn't make a sauce because that there was plenty of work, but from here as a base, you can really come up with plenty of good ideas. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just make a plate up with all the stuff we've made and, and see how they look like. All right, so it was a little bit early. The one thing I would say when you make these, they need to be totally, totally cold. I've barely waited like 10, 15 minutes. I've tried to put them in the freezer. And as you can see, some of them are totally set, but what do I want to say about recipes is that these two that looks perfect and hold very well even after a very brief cooling time this is the Escoffier recipe that uses lots of egg yolks and one egg for 200 milliliters of cream this is the modern version that you can see on the website and other recipe which is the two eggs with the cream and look what you get absolutely different and again, Escoffier always has the stuff that works and looks good. And if I was coming in a restaurant, if I see these four things, I would say, well, these are the best ones. And guess what? Again, Escoffier strikes again. So I'll put the Escoffier recipe in the video description. But to give you an idea and to complete that video, these are uh, like little flan and little custard made of vegetables. So imagine that these beauties are infused with broccolini flavor cauliflower, duck set of mushrooms, and tomato flavor. That could go as a garnish for all kinds of uh, fish if you want, uh, if you have something in the summer. It is really a type of size that uh, you should try at home. And uh, you know, I'm ashamed not to see it more often on some menus in some restaurants because it is absolutely delicious. But that's it for me for this uh, week recipe. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, drop me a comment in the comment section if you want to know anything about that recipe. If you make the recipe, please share your pictures on Instagram. Hashtag French Cook Academy. And as always, you can become a patron on my Patreon page. And I like to finish also to say thank you, of course, to all of you new subscribers, patron supporters, and all the people that subscribe on the uh, online school. Wish you all good luck in these hard times and with all the lockdowns. But we'll go through this together. Take care all and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.